الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد الحمد لله continuing with the journey that we got we're going through the book, Hisn al-Muslim, a book pertaining to remembrances and du'as and dhikr which will benefit the Muslim in his or her life. So today we're going to be looking at another du'a for waking up in the morning. So that was the section that we've been dealing with for the last week, is the section pertaining to du'as and dhikr that you say when you wake up in the morning. So today's du'a with Allah's permission is as follows Alhamdulillah alladhi afani fi jasadi wa radda alayya ruhi wa adhina li bi dhikrihi Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has given me well-being in my body and returned my soul to me and permitted me to remember him So before we go into the wordings of the hadith and break down the meanings we're going to look at where the hadith came from So the hadith it comes from a narration of Abu Harir radiyallahu anhu who said that the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا قَامَ أَحَدُكُمْ مِنْ فِرَاشِهِ ثُمَّ رَجَعَ إِلَيْهِ If one of you gets up from his bed or her bed and then returns to it, فَلْيَنْفُضْهُ بِسِنَفَةِ إِزَارِهِ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتِ Then let him, this person, um, clean the bed or wipe the bed with the edge of his clothing three times or anything three times. Wipe the bed three times when you return to it. فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَدْرِي مَا خَلَفَهُ عَلَيْهِ بعد. For verily the person doesn't know what came upon his bed or her bed after he or she left it. فَإِذَا طَجْعَ فَلْيَقُلْ And when the person goes to sleep, they should say بِسْمِكَ رَبِّي وَدَعْتُ جَنْبِي In your name, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my Lord, I have lied down. وَبِكَ أَرْفَعُهُ And with your name, with your permission, I get up. فَإِنْ أَمْسَكْتَ نَفْسِي فَرْحَمْهَا so if you withhold my soul, meaning cause me to die, then have mercy upon my soul. وَإِنْ أَرْسَلْتَهَا فَاحْفَظْهَا And if you send it forth back to this world, then protect it. بِمَا تَحْفَظُ بِهِ إِبَادَكَ صَالِحِينَ Then protect my soul in the way that you protect the righteous slaves of yours. فَإِذَا اسْتَيْقَضَ And if the person gets up, and this is the point where we're going to discuss the, the, the words which are important for us. فَإِذَا اسْتَيْقَضَ And if the person gets up, he or she says, Alhamdulillahi alladhi afani fi jasadi Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave me well-being in my body wa radda alayya ruhi and return my soul to me wa adhina li bi dhikrihi and gave me permission to remember him So the first word in this dua that we're going to take is Alhamdulillah and we've spoken about Alhamdulillah a few times now just a quick reminder it's praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his complete perfection in everything that is about Allah Azza wa Jal. So everything that is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is completely perfect. There are no flaws in Allah in anything about him or anything that he does. And Allah is complete beauty and majesty. So we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. And we also praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to the fact that he is continually moment after moment sending bounties upon us. So when we say Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, it has those meanings that we acknowledge and we recognize and that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his perfection absolutely that there is no there is no shortcoming with regards to Allah azza wa jal nothing negative whatsoever full of beauty and majesty and also we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the continual blessings the next word alladhi afani fi jasadi ay kataba li al afiya min al awja wal asqam so Praise be to Allah, the one who afani fi jasadi, the one who gave me well-being in my body. Meaning that he wrote for me that I'm in a state of well-being without any pains and without any difficulties. So it's a true blessing that when you are able to get up in the morning, you would really want to say Alhamdulillah, recognizing that you have your body intact. That you didn't wake up with a backache all of a sudden, which many people get and it spoils their day. You didn't wake up with any mental illnesses. You didn't wake up with any type of illness in your body. So this is something that we truly have to be thankful to Allah for. And appraising and understanding the reality of health 
it's only really understood when something goes wrong with you. Many a times there's parts of your body that you never really think about until you become sick, until you have a pain in that part of your body. Then you start to realize how important and how blessed you were to have your body functioning without that pain. That small toothache that you now have, that earache that you have, that pain in your head, all of these things, they prevent you from enjoying the day, let alone prevent you from sleeping at night. So this person, when we get up in the morning, we truly praise Allah Azawajal for the fact that He has given us afia, afani fi jasadi, that He has given us a, a, a state of well-being in our bodies. And some of the salaf, some of the righteous, they would say that health is like a crown upon the head of a person. But only the sick person can see that crown that people are wearing. So me and you and everyone, we are wearing crowns, but we don't recognize that crown. We don't recognize the value of what we have. It's only the sick person that looks at us and he wishes or she wishes that they can be like us. So we are so blessed to have a state of well-being in our bodies. And also the dua, this part, الَّذِي آفَانِ فِي جَسَدِي الحمد لله الذي آفاني في جسدي Praise be to Allah who's given me a state of well-being in my body. We also say this waking up because we are thankful that nothing really harmed us throughout the night. Many times people go to sleep and some kind of harmful insect comes upon them, whether it be a mosquito, a scorpion, a poisonous ant, or anything of that nature, spiders, anything can harm you when you're sleeping. So by the fact that we got up in the morning and we were healthy and we had no issues, then this is something that we should truly praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for and we should be thankful. And we shouldn't be from those people that when they wake up in the morning they feel, you know, life is difficult for me. I'm not earning as much money as I want to earn. And such matters. Okay, these are things that we face and these are things that cause us concern. But look at your state of being. You, you are from those who are not so many on this earth that have complete health. And that is something that we should truly be thankful for. And then that gives us positivity in our day. The next word, وَرَدَّ عَلَيَّ ruhi, And my soul has been returned to me. And we spoke about this in the previous class, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every night, the souls, they go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like they do at the time of death. Except that the difference is here, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits for our souls to return to us so that we continue again in this worldly life until it comes to that point in time when nobody will know when that point in time is and that's the scary thing until it comes to that point in time when your soul is not going to be returned to you once again Tayyip. so the soul has been returned to us and we thank Allah for that because now we have extra time again to live another moment in this world to live more moments of joy and positivity to live more moments of being able to prepare for the life to come so after that, Allah subhanahu the, the, um, the dua it says, وَأَذِنَ لِي بِذِكْرِهِ And He permitted me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm praising Allah because of the fact that my body is healthy, because of the fact that my soul has been returned to me, and because of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَذِنَ لِي بِذِكْرِهِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted me to remember Him. أَيْ قَدَرَهُ وَيَسَّرَهُ لِي فَضْلًا مِنْهُ وَنِعْمًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His blessings and from his bounties upon me that he has permitted me and made it easy for me to remember him subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is a bounty that we truly have to appreciate because to be remembered to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make dhikr of Allah azawajal, is food for the soul and it gives us happiness and tranquility like Allah says in the Quran Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul qulub is it not the fact and the reality that the hearts they find tranquility with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the hearts they find a wholesome tranquility and a well-being, a state of bliss when they are remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. And this remembrance is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because had Allah so wished He would have left us and we would have been like those many people that have their souls destroyed because they don't remember Allah Azza wa Jal. Because remember the hadith where the Prophet said, that the similitude of the one who remembers, of, remembers Allah as opposed to the one who doesn't remember Allah is like, like the one who is living and like the one who is dead. So when you remember Allah, you are living a true life. But if you don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's as though you are living a life just in shell. You are dead. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have turned away from us and let us be like those who choose not to remember Allah 
who choose to live their life in disobedience, but rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted us and blessed us from being from those who choose to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Hashr, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Do not be like those who forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning they forgot to remember Allah azawajal in their lives. So Allah caused them to forget them their own selves, meaning that they don't even recognize how far away from the mercy of Allah they are. They think they're living, living a decent life, but they don't recognize that without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their lives are going to be destroyed. And that's why Allah says, الفاسقون, They are the ones that are sinful, rebellion, rebellious people. So to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a true benefit and a gift. One that we should truly recognize and we should truly be fearful that that gift never leaves us. Because if it was the case that Allah turned away from us because we turned away from Him, then we would be in a state of despair and it would come to a state that we would even forget our own selves. We wouldn't even recognize the state of misguidance that we are in. Some benefits from the hadith. من علامات التوفيق أن يبدأ المسلم يومه بحمد ربه والإقرار له بالعبودية. From the signs of one being given tawfiq, being given the ability to do good, is that the Muslim starts their day off praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submitting and recognizing the need for him or her to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many people when they get up in the day, what is the first thing they do? The first thing they do is they check their phones. But the Muslim, the first thing he or she does is get up in the morning and say these beautiful du'as. Say these words of remembrance. So if you start your day by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially by doing these morning and evening adhkar that we are learning and reciting the Quran, your soul is going to be full of joy and positive energy and you'll find that you have blessings in the day. How can that not be the case when you've started your day by connecting to Allah Azawajal, by submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by acknowledging that Allah is your Lord and you were created only to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the best way to start the day for anybody. Once the soul recognizes the need for it to be in connection with Allah Azawajal, the need for it to be in servitude with Allah Azawajal, and eventually starts to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first thing that the soul does, as soon as it's back to life, after having slept, it rushes to the remembrance of Allah Azawajal. Because we know that with this, Allah Azawajal will bless our day, make our affairs easier, make our affairs full of blessing, and allow us to live a positive life in His worship. The great scholar, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy upon him, he did what many others from the righteous used to do. It's narrated that he used to sit for a long period of time after the prayer of Fajr, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it would be said to him, why do you do this? How come it is that once you've prayed Fajr, you don't move from where you are, you sit and you remember Allah Azawajal until the sun has risen and maybe even after that, which is a sunnah. He said, this is nourishment for my soul and my body. It strengthens me. Without this remembrance, I'm unable to fulfill the tasks that I need to fulfill during the day. And we know that people like Ibn Taymiyyah, they would live their lives serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshipping, teaching, making jihad in the path of Allah, enjoining the good, forbidding the evil, taking care of people's needs. They would be people that are truly busy in the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the service of Allah's people. So this remembrance helps the person to have strength, connects the person to Allah azawajal, and gives the person positivity in their day. Also a benefit, من تمام, من تمام العبد وعلو حمته, From the complete cognitive awareness, the complete um, understanding of the slave, and high aspirations, and يستثمر نعمة المعافى في الجسد, في الجسد فيما ينفعه يوم القيامة. Is that this person uses the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, from having the body returned to them, the soul returned to them, from having the body in a state which is a state of well-being, they use these blessings to invest in their hereafter so that they will be in safety on the Day of Judgment and be led to the everlasting life in paradise. This is true intelligence. This is the way that the believer thinks and the way that the believer is overjoyed to know that they have another day to use, that they can benefit themselves in the worship of Allah and to lead themselves to a life of joy and bliss forever in the hereafter. 
So this life, we're allowed to live this life, of course, that's why Allah put us here. We're allowed to enjoy this life, we're allowed to take from this life. But the majority of our thought and the majority of our uh, motivation should be for the hereafter. Think about it. 70 years in this life, for a trillion plus, I'm just saying a trillion, though it's a lot more than that, just so we can comprehend and make a comparison. 70 years in this life, for a trillion years in the hereafter and even more. 70 years of worship in this life, and it's not that we worship for 70 years, half of the life we're asleep, the other half we're working, the other half we're eating, drinking and playing. What we really worship is very little in fact. But if we do the worship to the best of our ability, and we do it in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 70 years for a trillion years of life in the hereafter, it's a no-brainer. Of course, we should use our gifts and our time to strive for the hereafter as much as possible. And the Prophet ﷺ has said elsewhere that the one who makes this his focus, the hereafter, his or her focus, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings this dunya, brings the world to them, whether the dunya wants to come or it doesn't want to come, whether the world wants to come to the person or it doesn't want to come. Meaning that when you wake up, your focus is automatically the hereafter, Allah makes this worldly life easy for you. Taib. The next du'a that we're going to take now is du'a pertaining to wearing clothes. So we finish with the morning du'as and we're going to the next section now in the book, Hasnul Muslim, The Fortress of a Muslim, where the author, Al-Kahtani, may Allah have mercy upon him, he brings forth these remembrances. Du'a u lubs al thawb A du'a or some du'as pertaining to what you say when you wear your clothing. So the du'a that we're going to look at is Alhamdulillahi alladhi kasani hadha thawb. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who gave me this clothing to wear. Wa razaqanihi min ghayri hawlin minni wa la quwa. And provided it for me or to me without any effort from myself. Let's look at the wording of the hadith before we go into the meanings of the words. So Abu Dawood, he narrates from Sahal ibn Mu'ad ibn Anas radiyallahu anhum an abihi from Anas ibn Malik who said anna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal man akala ta'aman thumma qal whoever eats food and then says alhamdulillahi alladhi at'amani hadha ta'am praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who fed me this food wa razaqanihi min ghayri hawlin minni wa la quwa and provided me this food without any effort from myself ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbihi then this person sins Past sins are going to be forgiven. And the future sins also. And he said, Whoever wears a clothing and says, Praise be to Allah who gave me this clothing to wear and he provided it for me. Uh, provided me this clothing without any effort from myself. Uh, then this person, his past sins are going to be forgiven and her future, his, her future sins will be forgiven. The first point to mention from this hadith is as Shaykh Uthaymeen, he mentions Rahimahullah, he says that this wording that you find in some hadith, that this person's past sins are forgiven and future sins are forgiven. Whenever you find a hadith that has this statement, then you should know that this part of the hadith or the hadith in totality is weak because the previous sins can be forgiven for us but the future sins are only forgiven for the Prophet ﷺ. So this statement, that which is forgiven in the past and the future is only for the Prophet ﷺ. But for us, the rest of the creation, it's only that which is forgiven in the past, right? Our future sins are not forgiven until we seek forgiveness from, for, from those sins or we do deeds which erase those sins. So Shaykh Uthaymeen, may Allah have mercy upon him, he made this point that when you hear this part, ma ta'akhir, the future sins, this part is weak or it means that the whole hadith is weak. In any case, this hadith is authentic except for that part which said the future sins are forgiven. So, looking at the wording, the first word, alhamdulillah, we know the meaning of that now inshallah. Uh, the next, alladhi kasani, meaning albasani, the one I'm praising Allah Azawajal, the one who has clothed me with this clothing. Had a thawb. And you mentioned the clothing. So when you are saying this dua, you say, Alhamdulillah, alladhi kasani hadha. You mention it, the t-shirt, the shirt, whatever you're wearing, right? And then he says, And provided me this, gave me this 
an amma bihi alayna. Bless me with this. And this point here, that Allah is the one that provides us with everything that we need and everything that we have. So yeah, it's true that we work and we strive and we make effort. But these efforts and these means that we take, they're only because Allah allowed us to do them. They're only because Allah guided us to them, the pathways that we walk to seek our provisions. And had it not been for Allah guiding us and making our efforts fruitful, then it would be the case that we wouldn't be provided. So we should always recognize that the blessings are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Allah says in Surah Al-Hud, وَمَا مِن دَابَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا There is no creature upon the earth except that upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is its provisions. Let me repeat that. There is no creature upon the earth except that upon Allah is its provisions. So now this verse is very interesting when it talks about Allah providing to us. Why? Because in the Arabic language it should have been that there is no creature on the earth except that from Allah are the provisions. Right? But Allah used the word, instead of from, He used the word on. And when you use the word on in a situation like this, it gives you the meaning of guarantee. So Allah is saying that ما من دابة في الأرض إلا على الله رزقها There is no creature on the earth except that upon Allah, on Allah, is its provisions. So it's for example, when I say to somebody, somebody's asked me to do a favor, I say, look bro, don't worry about that, that's on me. When I say on me, it means I'm guaranteeing it, I'm going to take care of it. So Allah is saying that the provisions of all creatures are on Allah. Allah is going to guarantee the provisions. So this gives us a great benefit, which is that we know that the provisions are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we shouldn't fear the future. We should have trust upon Allah azawajal, knowing that Allah is going to provide for us what we need. And that anything and that all provisions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to us. Everything which is decreed for us in life is going to come to us. And that which was, was not decreed for us is going to miss us. So we should never be sad. For sure, that which Allah has decreed for us will come to us. Some of the scholars, they said, it's like, for example, your shadow. Does your shadow ever leave you? Your shadow is always be behind you. The shadow is always behind you. Likewise, our provision is always behind us trying to catch up with us. Because those provisions have to get to us before we die. Because Allah has written that a certain amount of provisions on this earth are for each and every one of us. So we should never fear too much. We strive to the best of our ability. We make the effort, but we don't have panic attacks when it comes to regards our provisions because Allah has guaranteed them. As Allah mentioned, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned also in a hadith in Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ said, لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَتَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِهِ if you were to have complete reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the true manner that you should, la razaka kum kama tuyur, he would have provided for you like he provides for the birds. They leave their nests in the morning empty stomach and they return full of stomach later on in the day. The next word in the hadith, min ghayri hawlin minni wala quwa, that praise be to Allah azawajal who has given me this clothing provided me this clothing without any effort from myself or any strength and it said that the meaning of this is we spoke about these beautiful meanings in the previous class that when you say it has the meaning that you cannot prevent any harm from yourself or you cannot bring about any good for yourself except with the permission of Allah Azawajal, except with the power of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So min ghayri hawli minni that there is no movement from me and no strength except with Allah's permission. This is how the believer always understands his or her need upon Allah Azawajal, and it's a reality. The reality is that we need to understand that we are truly in need of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Ya yuhan nas antum al fuqara'u ila Allah, wallahu al ghaniyul hamid. O oh, mankind. O oh, humanity, all of you are, are in destitute need of Allah Azawajal. You are all poor in front of Allah, needing Him, needing him completely. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rich and free of all needs, as mentioned in the Quran. So this is how the believer understands that Allah has given me this clothing. And it wasn't from any effort on my behalf in the real sense, because as we said, any efforts that we made, they were only because Allah allowed us and showed us and guided us to those efforts. So the permission for this item that I'm wearing was only from Allah Azawajal. It's a true gift to me from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and that's how the believer lives a fruitful life, always recognizing the blessings of Allah Azawajal. 
always looking at the blessings and thinking, SubhanAllah, I don't really deserve this. You know, there's so many people in the world that don't have what I have. Always thinking about the blessings and this causes the person to be in love with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This causes the person to be always thanking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala moment, time after time, again and again, once recognizing the blessings. And it stops the person from being somebody who's arrogant and thinking that what they have in the world is only due to their own uh, abilities. And that is something which is completely uh, wrong and not how the slave should think about their Lord. Because Allah says in Surah Al-Nahl, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Anything that you have as a blessing is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's from none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب, some benefits, further benefits from the hadith that the Shaykh mentioned. استحقاق الله عز وجل لجميع الواء المحامد والثناء That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deserving of all types of praise to him alone. لأنه أهلا لها فهو صاحب النعم المتوالية because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truly deserving of that as he is the one that gives bounty after bounty to his creation and Allah azza wa jal says وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوحَا if you were to contemplate upon the bounties of Allah azza wa jal you wouldn't be able to gather them you wouldn't be able to count them if you were to try to enumerate the amount of blessings that you have from Allah azza wa jal you couldn't compute them and enumerate them وَرَقْمَ ذَلِكَ فَهُوْ يَرْضَى مِنْ إِبَادِهِ بِالْيَسِيرِ مِنْ الْحَمْدِ And even if, though that is the case that we have a numerous amount of blessings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with just a little bit of thanks from us. Just by us saying these words of thanks and recognizing the bounties that Allah has given us, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us. Another, another benefit, اللِبَاسِ مِنْ جُمْلَةِ النِّعْمِ أَلَّتِي أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ بِهَا عَلَى خَلْقِهِ That clothing is from the general blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to his creation. For wajib shukr hadi ni'mah. So it's upon us to have thanks and to be thankful for this blessing. وَمِن ذَلِكَ adam al isbal. And from thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to wear the clothing in a way which is not displeasing to Allah. For example, for the men, they shouldn't have their clothing going below the ankle. وَعَدْمَ اللُّبْسُ الْحَرِيرِ And they shouldn't be wearing clothing which is made from silk. وَعَدْمَ اللُّبْسُ الثَوْبَ الشُّهْرَ And the men and women shouldn't wear clothing which is shuhra. Shuhra clothing is a type of clothing that you wear to show off in the sense that nobody else in your community really dresses like that. So this is something which is disliked by Allah Azawajal, to wear a type of clothing which is not found to be the norm in the society because it means you want everyone to look at you, to point to you and you want to be different from everyone else, a type of being arrogant and showing off. And from this as a side point, a very important point is that it's morally bankrupt and morally corrupt for us to uh, use Allah's blessings in a way that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's so far morally wrong. How could you be a person like that, that Allah has gifted you with something, but now you use it to disobey Allah Allah has bought you, allowed you to buy a laptop because you needed it for your study and work, but apart from using it for your study and work, you start to watch porn. So how morally corrupt is that, that Allah gave us you that bounty, yet we use that bounty for other than Allah, for other than the pleasure of Allah Azawajal. Another uh, point to be taken is taqsir is that the person recognizes that they themselves don't have the strength and the ability to bring for them provisions that are required. وَعَدْمِ الْقُدْرَةِ عَلَى تَحْصِيلِ نِعْمَةِ الْلِبَاسِ وَنَحْوِهَا so you recognize that had it not been for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving you this gift of the food, of the wealth, of the children, of the housing that we live in, of the clothing, of the job, of the cars that we drive, of the food that we eat, of the health that we have, of the friends that we have, so many blessings that we can't enumerate, then the person should recognize that this is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only a gift from Allah Azawajal and nothing more, it has nothing to do with me. It's not because of my cleverness or because of my good looks or because of my money or whatever. It's only a true bounty from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When you live like that, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will be pleased with you. So from Allah's bounty upon us is that He gives us so many gifts. And from the greatest of bounties is that Allah, after giving us these gifts, He reminds us that we should be thankful to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and He encourages us to be thankful to Him. Why is this so important? So when you thank Allah then 
After that, you get so much more reward in this world and the hereafter. ومن ذلك قوله في نهاية الحد حديث for example like it was mentioned in the end of this dua that we were learning غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه that the person when he says this dua then the person's sins are forgiven so this is just amazing the scholar the sheikh he says فسبحان شكور الودود so glory be to Allah how amazing he is the one who is thankful and the one who loves Allah سبحانه وتعالى so look at it Allah gives us for free we enjoy it we wear it we eat it we drive it and then we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it and we are rewarded for that in an amazing way. I mean, how more bountiful and merciful and loving of a Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives us, then encourages us and teaches us and guides us to thank Him. We thank Him and we get more in terms of reward and even gifts from Allah as well. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِن تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ And your Lord has announced, uh, your Lord has stated that if you give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he's going to increase you so look at that when we give thanks to Allah جل, when we praise Allah جل, then we are increased in bounties some of the scholars they will say that giving thanks is al-hafid al-jalib that giving thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hafid meaning it preserves and protects what you have and it's al-jalib meaning it brings about more for you and that is the reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we thank Him and we praise Him for what we have, Allah Jal increases us in the reward and also increases us in more of the materialistic things that we have. So, true thanks is to recognize first and foremost that the bounty, the gift was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and then to increase in worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is the true thanks, not just thanking Allah upon the tongue and praising upon the tongue, but rather to let it settle upon the body in a way that causes you to submit to Allah Because the one who truly understands how many bounties Allah is giving them from time to time, time after time, and realizes and recognizes that they don't deserve these bounties, it's only a gift from Allah Azawajal, then this causes the person to have a softness in their heart and to want to worship Allah Azawajal more as a way of thanking Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala and as a, as a way of having the majesty Allah Azawajal continue blessing us in the rest of our lives it's a bit of a short one today inshallah we'll stop here and anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any shortcomings and mistakes were from myself and shaitan